Hi, welcome to the Cornerfield shop. In this episode, I'm going to make some improvements to my mobile workbench. And one of them is making my saw slide out of the workbench, like this. Want to see how I built it? Then stay tuned. The purpose of the sliding mechanism that I'm building is purely to get access to the fence lock and release lever for the driving knife. I won't be using the saw when it's extended. I start this project by disassembling the top of my workbench. Since I didn't use any glue, this is a matter of finding all the screws and removing them. When the top cabinets are removed, I also have to take out the front stretcher that holds the front of the saw. Here I'm cutting slots for the runners that will go underneath the saw and will allow it to slide out. I also undo an additional leg that I added for the scrap door that you see here. This is a simple box that slides on scraps of wood that I attach between the legs. The saw is going to sit on a panel that will support the frame of the saw. The feet will remain on the workbench frame when the saw is in a normal position. The panel I have is 5mm thick and the gap is 7, so I have to leave the slides 2mm proud. My slides are 12.5 thick, so I make the cutout 10.5 deep. Here I'm making a quick sketch to wrap my head around what I'm doing. The position of the slides is roughly a quarter of the way in from the side, which I measure and mark. First I set the height of my blade and then I use my table saw and crosscut sled to make the slots. Before moving on, I check if the slots are in the right position. Next I cut the base of my slide to rough size. With the base for the slides cut to size, I make cutouts for the feet of the saw. I want the feet to sit on the workbench and not on the slide when it's not pulled out. This is to transfer any load into the frame of the workbench and not onto the slides. After checking where the saw should stand, I mark the feet and cut the slots using my jigsaw and the roofing square. With the slots cut, I check the positioning of the saw on my slide. The feet are sitting a little proud of the frame, so I have to cut the slots for the slides a little deeper. This will lower the slide and make the feet of the saw sit flush with the frame. Now that the front stretcher and the top of the slide are done, I can check to see if the top of the saw is still flush with the surrounding cabinets. Next I need to add an additional beam to support the back of the slides. This will go in between two beams of the frame. If you're making it from scratch, a half lap joint would be better, but I don't want to disassemble the rest of the workbench, so I'm going to use pocket hole screws instead. Since this will only need to support the saw when the slide is extended, it will be plenty of strong. I must say though that it was a pain to install. Perhaps disassembling it wasn't such a bad idea after all. Anyway, I made sure the slides were level and parallel to the workbench and I attached them using some screws. I used some clamps to temporarily attach the top to the slides and pulled it out. Now I could fasten them using some screws. Unfortunately the top was so thin I didn't have any screws that were short enough, so I had to use an angle grinder and cut off the protruding screws. While I was reattaching the cabinets I found out that I actually left the base of the slide too long. This meant I had to undo the top of the slide and make a cutout so it would fit against the back cabinet. Not a big problem, but it reminds me how important it is to stick to the plan. I simply forgot to cut the base to its final size. With the cutout made, everything worked like a charm. I can now easily loosen my fence and move it from one position to the other. Also, I can reach the lever for the riving knife, which is a big plus. Some other improvements that I made during this project are more nice to have. From the leftover material from the bottom of the slide, I cut some strips to block dust that could escape from the sides of the saw. Another thing I did by popular request on my first video is to connect the holes for the dust collection so the saw can tilt without me having to remove the hose. It didn't really bother me, but I thought I might as well do this while I'm improving on my build. 
It was a design flaw after all, so it's better off fixed. The last thing I did was rebuild a small box to hold cutoffs. It used to sit on the bottom shelf of my workbench, where it was catching dust and sitting too low for easy access. So I wanted to sit in the left cabinet where it's easier to reach and better closed off from dust. This meant resizing all the pieces and reassembling it. I hope you enjoyed this update video. If you do, please like it and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me in the future. Thanks for watching and I will see you for the next one at the Cornerfield shop.